Um, so Kevin gave you, uh, introduced you the basic unit for learning this perception, and Lisa introduced like more complex layers, like the convolutional layers or the max pooling, and and the relus. And now I'm going just to put things all together and try to solve a real computer vision problem. This problem that I'm going to uh, overview, it's a problem of image classification. And I'm going to base on models that were used in what's kind of known as the Olympic Games of computer vision and machine learning, which was the ImageNet challenge, or is. OK, so what is the ImageNet task? The ImageNet task, it's, it's, uh, the goal is given an image, try to predict which of which object category appears on the image, like, like generating a chart. Like for a jump, for example, in this second uh, figure, uh, you would like to predict containership. And what you have here below, it's like a different concept, like containership, lifeboat, amphibian, fireboat, drilling, platform. These uh, chats here, these classes, they were actually predicted by the, by the model, by one of the models. And uh, the, the bar that you have, it's telling you the confidence of the model when doing the prediction. So the, the, the larger, the more confident. Yeah? So you would like, as they are, they are all, the, all of them sorted, you would like to have the correct class, that's the one that you have in, in white, on the, on the top of the, of the list. Yeah? And actually, the problem uh, in this task, it was formulated as given 1,000 object classes, just tell me which, which, are, which is the class that appears on the image, because each image had one label. And when assessing this on, this, on the challenge, they were, uh, there were different metrics, but one of the metrics allowed looking at the top five predictions and see if, and if one of the predictions was correct, then it was considered that if one of the top five was the, the right one, the one from the ground truth, the prediction was, was considered correct. That, that's called the top five accuracy. Um, and there was another metric called top one, which would only look at the first one, at the top of the predictions. Okay? So the task, again, is given an image and 1,000 classes, tell me which are, which are the classes, the object classes that appear in the image. And in this challenge, uh, competition of ImageNet, they were evaluate whether only the top prediction, the one that I'm, you are most confident, that would be the top one error, or the top five. And, and among the top five predictions, if one of them was the correct one, you would consider that the prediction was correct. That these were the rules of the competition. Yeah? And how they did that, they, uh, the organizers of this challenge, they released a data set of uh, one to two uh, million images for training. So that's image and label. So you had an image and, and the object class that appears on, on the image, and uh, 100,000 images for test that you are supposed to predict. <coughs> this data set is huge. If you remember the, at the welcome, I mentioned that ImageNet, the data set, so the this image is the data set that was released in 2009, and this data set was released together with the challenge, like trying to solve this, this task. And the challenge is where the models that I'm going to cover now participate in. And actually, I'm going to overview the best models in a few years, on the few years of the explosion of deep learning for computer vision. Yeah, but there, there are, so I want you to be aware that building a data set and annotating it, it's also a huge task. Okay? So, the models, we'll, we'll speak a lot in this course about models, but building a, mo a data set, uh, that's a lot of work as well. And you should not think that that's very easy to do. You will probably, if, that, if you try to develop something, you realize. Okay, so let's go to 2012. Uh, that year, there was the, the organized challenge of ImageNet challenge, uh, image classification, and the challenge had been running for a few years, and that year, these are the results that, uh, were, that were obtained. Here, uh, what I'm plotting is not the accuracy, so uh, this y-axis, it's error rate, top five error rate, so it's just the opposite of accuracy. You want uh, a low error. And there was this team called super Supervision uh, that had a much lower error rate than the rest, okay? That's almost 10%, 10% in computer vision. Uh, it was huge. A, a game changer, a uh, revolution, okay? And that's where we are. In 2012, uh, this team magically, well, not magically, but that's, that's the, the, the goal of, of this course, uh, they were able to improve a lot the, the result from the rest of the teams. The rest of the teams, they were based on uh, classic computer vision tools like 
sieves or fissure vectors. If you remember that Kevin at the end of his lecture, he explained a, a he mentioned a complicated pipeline of, of many blocks. That's well, these are variations of those blocks. Probably very very smart, very well engineered. But then there were some a team that had a, a big difference with a new technique. What was that technique? So now you should uh, you are kind of familiar <laughs> with this technique. I know that. Uh, it's, it's, it's very dense, of course, but you are kind of familiar with this technique. This technique was based on deep learning. It was based on building a hierarchical model, that means like one layer after the other, so to be able to, to uh, build uh, <coughs> creature classifiers. And in, in those layers, you had the types of layers that Elisa explained, like convolutions and, and max pools and, and regularizations. Okay? This model, uh, apart from being called supervision, it's popularly known as AlexNet. Okay? The, the first author is Alex Krzyzewski, and he was in Toronto at that time together with Geoffrey Hinton, who was a, one of the persons who has been working for a long, long time on uh, neural uh, networks and models. And that was a revolution. Okay? Then in 2013, there was another competition. And again, the winner of the competition, they improved the results of AlexNet. It was based on convolution neural networks. So, so neural network where many of the layers, especially the first layers, they were based on convolutions, like what is explained. In that case, it was a team from, uh, um, originally from NYU, New York University, from the lab from another professor, uh, another famous professor called Yale Kuhn, um, who basically what they did is, um, they tried to understand what was going well and what was not going well in the model from AlexNet. So, Maybe at some point, some of you should start wondering, like, why, why, if this model works so well, why did it work so well? Why? Because there were like five of these convolutional layers, and why didn't, why didn't there are four? Or um, if these are fully connected layers, that's that's what it means. Why there are like one, two, uh, three fully connected layers? Why not with only one? Or okay, why, why all these reasons? Okay, and. At that point, and it's actually nowadays, we don't, it's not very clear either, but it's tricky to know why, which are the parameters that best solve your problem. That's one of the challenges in deep learning. Okay? Nowadays, this is a challenge. So if you have ideas, just go and explore this. So in 2013, what these guys did, they, they visualized, they, they saw what, how the network was behaving. They would try to visualize what was happening in there, and based on the resolution, they introduced changes, and that improved the performance. Okay? About the visualizations, later Amaya will tell you what, what are the things that can, you can visualize in these models. We'll just go and skip it very quickly, but they visualize the response of the filters that were learning there, more or less. And they noticed that some of the filters, they were not doing anything useful, and they introduced some changes to improve the performance. And that's uh, the new uh, architecture they suggested. Actually, that's an, one of the architecture that's publicly available, and we'll know it very well. Uh, sorry, they also introduced another uh, another um, mechanism for organization called dropout that later also I think I guess Kevin or Alisa Alisa will tell you about what dropout is but it was kind of in Imagenet it was mainly introduced in, in this uh, contribution and these guys so they were in NYU they published the model and there was another model that actually performed better but they didn't really publish it because it was part of their startup it's called Clarify and nowadays that's a company kind of successful who is doing video uh, analysis and it, it exists you can go and, and check online and they are the uh, um, Hillary is the is the CTO. Then 2014, um, there you had uh, the number of participants in ImageNet that were using GPU, so the, the, the hardware that you need to train these models, it, it increased a lot, up to 210 participants were using GPUs, means that everybody was, or most people were really using deep learning models to solve this task. And at that uh, year, there were mainly like two models that performed very well. Um, and they did many tricks, but one of the, the most visual ones, the, the first thing, the first evident thing is that they were putting more layers in the models and, and more tricks, okay? But this is, this would be AlexNet in the, the amount of layers. These are like the two best models in 2014. That's called GoogleNet and VGG, okay? So there are, there are other differences, but the most obvious one is that they were deeper. Deeper models means that you can capture uh, better the distribution of the, of the, of the space. That was the idea of GoogleNet. That's why they call it Inception. Probably if you can find it online as the name of Inception. Inception, it was based, uh, it was inspired by this movie called Inception that the people, characters were 
uh, getting into a dream by into a dream into a dream into a dream. Okay, so that's here you go deeper, deeper, deeper. And they they had 22 layers of depth, and they also have like uh, other um, uh, spe uh, let's say a particular model that they called inception models. That, that's that's here where I mark in red. And these inception models, uh, it's it's kind of known as a variation of something called a network in a network, which is which is a network where there are like different paths. In one of the paths, you have like one by one convolutions, or three by three, or five by five, or a max pooling. So the data takes different paths, and doing this way, they were able to capture better the relations uh, on the on the data. Okay. Um, also that year, uh, there was another model from Oxford and Google DeepMind. Popular, uh, popular known as like VGGs models. VG is the name of the research group, one of the research groups in Oxford. And they obtained better results uh, that year, but it was after the deadline for submission for the challenge. So the results are better than Google Net. So Google Net 7.9, before submission they got 8.4, but after the deadline they, they went down up to 7. So that makes them also very popular. And again, they did different tricks, but one of them is like, instead of, of uh, working with convolutions of 5 by 5 or 7 by 7, all these convolutions, they decompose them into stacked convolutions of 3 by 3. So if you have a stack of two 3 by 3 convolutions, in terms of receptive field, it means like how, what input data you see, that's equivalent as, as a convolution of 5 by 5. But you have less parameters. If you, if you, so 5 by 5, if you compute the parameters you need, it's less than 2 times 3 by 3. Okay, so less parameters, same receptive field, they, they were able to, to get some performance out of it. And, and, and other tricks like having no, no poolings between convolutional layers and having convolutional strides of one. Then 2015, next year, uh, the winning model now, it's again a model with more layers. So in this, this time, it was a model with 152 layers called ResNet. And there were uh, also again different Variation. The most important important one. Uh, sorry, here there's the uh, a comparison about the depth in terms in terms of layers. So 152 layers compared to the eight layers from AlexNet or, or ZF. So just check how how things evolve in that. That also means uh, more layer also will require more computational performance, memory, kind of. Okay, so. So what did they do? Um, so they, first, they, what they did is they, they tried to, to just add more layers. Here you have a graph. Uh, the line in blue, it's with 18 layers. The y-axis is the error. So the lower, the better now. And he, these curves that you're seeing here, you, you'll see. They will explain them soon. But uh, it's how the error decreases when you train this model. So when you train this model, this is like an iterative uh, process that takes some time and after some time your model learns okay so this is time so the more the more more time uh, models uh, the error was decreasing so, so that's fine but here you see the 18 layer model uh, the error was lower than the 34 layer model so that's not good for what I wanted to explain because I want to explain is that they managed to train a model with 152 layers okay so they they want to go deeper and what they did is they introduced something called uh, residual learning which mainly what it means is that when you have your data, it doesn't need to go through all the layers, your data. At some point, you, you create paths that allow to skip some of the layers. And, and if you allow this path and you can train it like, with the same techniques, that will give more flexibility to your model, let's say, and your model can train better. Yeah? And by doing that, they manage to actually uh, have a, net, a network, a model of 34 layers that uh, was training better than the one with 18. Okay, here I'm talking about 18 and 34 because these results they were with a toy example because they wanted to show this concept. But in the end, the model that participated in the challenge it had the 152 layers. Okay, mm, I'm almost done with this. Um, if you want to learn more, I suggest that you watch this uh, video from Lee Fei Fei. She's one of the. She was a uh, the lab. Uh, professor in Stanford that uh, built the ImageNet data, uh, data, uh, database, data set. And right now, she's in Google Cloud, um, uh, chief scientist in Google Cloud. And so she's kind of 
helping us with the credits. He's helping you with the GPUs that you will use. So she's, uh, in the end, one of the persons who's uh, giving us these GPUs. And also about ImageNet, nowadays, um, so the image classification task, for that data set, for those 1,000 classes, it's kind of considered as solved because it kind of matches human performance. And nowadays, the community of ImageNet, they also define other tasks that Amaya will tell you later about, or tomorrow, about object detection and many other tasks. But they are kind of thinking about what they're going to do next. So actually, in July, there is the, the last edition of ImageNet. Uh, and they, they will have the workshop on July 26, and they will discuss what's going to be the future of ImageNet as an organization or, or challenge. And that's it. Um, just all these names that I mentioned, like AlexNet, VGG, ResNet, Google Net Inception. When you go online and you find, look for models, you will find all these models. All these models, they are publicly available, so you can use them. And only, normally, you will, what you will do, if you do computer vision, you will start with, fr from them, and you will adapt those models to whatever problem you have. That's a very common practice. Yeah, so I think I'm done. Should I stop it? <laughs> okay.